All right, ladies and gentlemen, looks like it's time. Yes, indeed, it is time for another Student of the Gun Radio, brought to you by us and everyone else and uh, all that good stuff. Weaponized bureaucracy and border crisis. Uh, these are things that the uh, the mainstream news media is going to ignore uh, and pretend is not happening, but we cannot ignore that. We can only ignore it to our own peril. We have a Duracoat Finished Firearm segment, as always, a Brownells Bullet Point, and a Student of the Gun Homeroom, where we highly recommend that you be dangerous on demand. Now, you want to play the music first or after we talk about this imbecile in Washington, D.C.? I can play it right now if you want. Okay, play it right now. Play it right now. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. That's me. And this is us. And here we are talking to you. That's how that works, in case you're wondering. In case you're wondering, that's how that works. All right, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. So Zach found something. Uh, and if you're on Discord right now, go ahead and drop your questions, if you have any, into the uh, uh, into the channel there, into the channel comments. But uh, apparently Elizabeth Warren, this, all right, where is this scumbag witch from? Democrat, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. She uh, blamed her failed 2020 presidential bid on the fact that she was born without a male appendage, according to a new book. Uh, NBC News correspondent Ali Vitali. That's kind of a cool name. Ali Vitale. With a new book, Electable, Why America Hasn't Put a Woman in the White House Yet. Based on an expert, an excerpt from the book in Politico, Warren and some in her campaign believe that one of the reasons is because Iowa's Democratic voting base is filled with a bunch of sexists. So it was Iowa that kept her out. It wasn't like it was the her, rest of the country. Was, yeah. Was, uh, <sighs> Could you just get over yourself for five seconds? And I got an idea. Why don't we put uh, Christy Nome in the White House? No! Everyone tells me that they would vote for me if I had a penis. Really? Everyone tells her that? Everyone. Everyone. Every single person she's ever talked to. Everyone. I I like the idea that she's just like walking down the street and someone will say, hey, man. Hey, Elizabeth, listen, I, I would really be really down. It's just you don't got the right parts. You don't have a penis. Maybe it's because you're a liar. Maybe it's because you're a communist. Maybe it's because you're a scumbag. Could that be it? No, that couldn't who, possibly be it. It couldn't possibly be because as a woman, because you told everyone in order to get government bennies, you told everyone you were a, quote, Native American. That was her. Yeah, I was that was say, her. Isn't That's this the right. chick who was like, yeah. who pretend, who filled out government forms stating that she was a quote Native American in order to get the bennies, to get the privileges, to get to the front of the line, and she and when when confronted on it, she's like, I'm a I'm a a, a one sixteenth Cherokee, I think thirteen. No, it wasn't even that. It was like one sixty fourth or something. It's like, oh, go eat a giant bag of fallacies she's a liar they called her faux cahontas remember when they faux cahontas uh you're a liar you're a communist you're a scumbag and nobody wants your crap so this and so she's she does what all democrat politicians do is they engage in a money laundering scheme called book publishing so they publish books and then the the democrat money machines for instance the unions They'll go out. Now you we talked about this before, Jerry. Remember the, how they launder money? The uh they'll write a book and then the AFL CIO will order twenty thousand copies of that book. Right? And uh they'll they'll like throw them in the garbage or stick them in a warehouse or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um the most the important thing is that the money goes to the candidate. The money goes to the person who wrote it. Uh, nobody actually wants this garbage. 
Right. No, I have a, I have a, a lesbian couple across the street from me, and they bought Elizabeth Warren's book. Oh, congratulations! Uh, no American wants this book. Um, but it's not Elizabeth Warren's book. Mm. Well, who wrote it? The chick with a cool name. We just said that. Oh, Ali Vitali is out with it. Oh, Ali Vitali wrote this book. I thought she was saying it about Elizabeth Warren. No. About Elizabeth Warren's book. No. Ali Vitali wrote a book out with a new book, Electable, Why They Haven't Put... Oh, and this is her... So she she got a quote from Warren about this? Yeah, she's the one that was, like, with Warren, I guess. Uh, so campaign. she was with her during the camp. Uh, <laughs> All right, I'm done with this story. I am done with this story. I don't need to hear whining from communists and scumbags who should be in a prison not in in the the Senate. All right, the uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do something freaking positive here. We've got a lot of negative. We have evil people in the world doing evil things. But what we're going to do is we're going to put our money where our mouths are. We're going to practice that of which we preach. And it occurred to me recently that apparently we're not doing enough. Did that ever occur to you, Jared? Like we're not saying enough, we're not writing enough, we're not no. recording enough, we're not you know what we're what we are going to be releasing soon with the SOTGU is going to help us a lot mm. accomplish the things that we want to accomplish. Yeah. That'll be the thing that does enough, hopefully. Huh. So we're talking. We you know we've been talking about strength training and nutrition and so forth, and we still get people who come and say, "Yeah, but what about Barnabadaba? What about this? What about that? What about the other thing?" I'm like, "Are you what?" For instance, I'll give you a for instance. Uh, last week, we talked about a gentleman who saved another gentleman's life. Both of them were in the same Beyond the Band-Aid uh, traumatic medical class, and one of them saved the other one's life. Uh, okay. he, saved, he stopped him from bleeding to death by putting a rat's tourniquet on his arm. And if you paid attention to our socialist media, uh, our Insta garbage, or our fascist book, we shared a photo uh, of the group, we, we shared a class photo and a, a photo. It was another photo of me uh, getting ready to show somebody how to put a pressure dressing on. And I said that there's a person alive today because other people took the time to get the training and carry the gear. Now, I screwed up, Jared and Zach and World. I'm going to tell you how I screwed up. I tagged Rat's Tourniquet in the post. And as if on cue, someone came out of the woodwork and said, but I've read studies that say that, that that's no good and you shouldn't use it. Who funded those studies? Where did the, they come from? The, and I, I said, well, maybe instead of, instead of reading studies, you should engage in training. Good training. And they, the person came back and said, but the council on the TCCC said... Like, here's the fact. The fact is that it, multiple people, but we know this person personally, is alive today because that tourniquet was put on his body. Those don't work, though. So. The, the, the counsel on the TCCC say that those are ineffective and that they don't work. But, but the person's alive. You say, why would you do that? Because you want to know the truth? Because that's what people will carry. That's what people will have on them. But uh, it, it goes back to the, do, we, do you not listen loud enough? How do people show up and say things like that? They obviously don't listen. So here's what I did. I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do for you guys. I'm going to take all this knowledge and I'm going to condense it. I'm going to condense it. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a, 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 a hospital dietitian that tells you to eat soy and tofu the tofu and peanut butter to keep to gain maintain muscle mass i think she was probably technically a nutritionist or did she actually have dietitian i don't title. know because i don't she, it should have said i can't see it should have said susan comma imbecile yeah. uh it should have said colon imbecile but um so what i've done uh is as we've created a, uh, a document, an article, it's called the Student of the Gut Guardian Challenge. Why Guardian? I'm going to tell you why. Because uh, the Constitution 
It's only keepers, the people, George Washington. George Washington said during his farewell address that it is the people who are responsible for protecting, keeping, guarding the Constitution against those who would destroy it. And we know who would destroy it, communists and the government. You see, who benefits from the destruction of the Constitution? It's not the people. The people don't benefit from the destruction of the Constitution. It's the government that benefits from the destruction of the Constitution. Now, in order to be a guardian of the Constitution, you need a strong, healthy body, and you also need a strong, healthy, well-functioning brain. They go together. And you cannot eliminate, you cannot ignore one and expect to benefit from the other. It works in concert. But you cannot have a strong, healthy, functional brain if you continuously consume dietary poison. And in the article, I spell out, and I've talked to numerous doctors, experts, medical professionals, uh, Dr. Dan has been telling us for years to stop eating all this corn garbage. It's terrible. And I know, I've known about soy for a long time because my body has an internal defense mechanism against soy and soybeans and tofu. If it gets into my body, my body has a violent reaction. And it says, my body says to me, stop. Don't do that again. Don't put that garbage in here anymore because if you do, I'm gonna have we're gonna have problems. Quick aside, those of you that are listening and are also grad program members, we've got the interviews with Dr. Dan Olasnicki, and those are in the celebrity interview section in the student lounge. That is true. You so, can and should be yes, listening. If you to have those. not listened to those, go back and listen to them. So here's here is my challenge and also my promise to you. Now we share pretty often, rather often, we, we share images and videos of us engaging in strength training. And the reason that I do that is because I never want to be accused of advising someone to do something that I wouldn't do, right? I don't ever want anyone to be able to say, well, you say to do that. You're like that firearms instructor that tells everyone they should carry a gun, but then never carries a gun himself. Mm. That's not us. If we say, you should lift heavy crap to make yourself more healthy. We're going to go lift heavy crap to make ourselves more healthy. Uh, and so we share that with you so that you know that that's what we're doing. Uh, and we share a progress with you. And hopefully maybe some of you will be inspired. There are people who inspire me. I, you know, if I get that, that feeling like the, uh, I don't know if I want to go to the gym today. Uh, if I get that feeling, then I think about, well, you know, what would James say? What would Matt say? You know, what would Scott say and say, quit being a puss and, and go do what you need to do. Right. I think, you know, those guys are doing it. So what's my excuse? And that's, and if I'm, if my old ass is out there doing it, what's your excuse? Oh, that's right. You don't have one. So what is this guardian challenge? The challenge is for 30 days, 30 days. Uh, just and, and we're going to talk about it in greater detail tomorrow on the grad program, but 30 days, I want you to read this, cut out three dietary poisons, high fructose corn syrup, HFCS, soy, that there's so much soy filler garbage in our food, it's disgusting, and seed oils. Seed oils are high in omega-6, which is terrible for your brain. I want you to engage in strength training of some sort. I don't care what you do. Uh, I mean, we recommend Barbell Logic, but if you don't want to do that because you don't like it, then don't. I don't care. Do something. But my, uh, in addition, and, and I, I mentioned, I said, you know, people are like, well, I got a plate carrier and I got this and I got that. And it's like, that's great. Can you put that thing on and actually walk a mile? Have you ever done that? Did you put that thing on and walk 100 yards and then you had to stop and sit down or take a knee because you thought you were going to die? Ladies and gentlemen, a plate carrier, depending on the level of the plates, what they're made of, is six to 12 pounds, depending, right? If you got the really super expensive ones that are lightweight, it's about six. If you got the standard steel ones, it's about 10 to 12. 
You know, if you're walking around with 10 to 12 pounds of useless fat on your body, and you think about this, Jared, you shed that 10 to 12 pounds of useless fat, you can replace that with a plate carrier. Except for your and, plate and it's carrier. And it evens out. So how about day? Why don't you cash me outside? And the good news is that if you uh, haven't done any weight loss or fitness stuff in your life for a while, it'll be relatively easy to lose weight quickly. Uh, most of your big gains happen in the beginning. Yeah, in the first uh, and, uh, that's a couple way months. That, uh, I think that that's probably a way that the Lord rewarded us and it made it easier for us to continue journeys where if you actually make progress quickly, then you're more likely to stick with it. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. So uh, every day, uh, starting on, well, I'll start on Wednesday. Oh, that's a weird day. I don't know. But I, I promised I would do this for 30 days, and, and we're, we're officially launching this. You guys right now, if you're hearing this, if you're listening to this, if you're reading this, you're ahead of the curve. You got the, you know, with the preview. Now, you got the trailer. <laughs> we're going to give you the trailer for this before everybody else does. I'm going to get on a platform. It's not going to be fascist book. Uh, I'll just do Insta garbage every day. Every day I will get on and I will do or record a live video as a check-in. You know what you could do? What? You could do that in the Telegram. And I could do that. Can Student I do that? The gun. Are you sure? Slash telegram. I don't think I've announced that on the public yet. But yeah go into the telegram you guys we've got a telegram channel now we've had a lot of people ask for it uh, and we've had some people say you know you're uh welcome to the party essentially i was like well yeah the reason that we waited is because we've done a bunch of different you know social much, medias before how much that we asked people that people asked us to do and then nobody went to them oh yeah everyone's like man you need to get on parlor so and I've then we did attention to what you guys are saying it's not that we weren't listening. It's just that we were waiting for enough interest to do so. So if you're on Telegram, go to studentsofthegun.com slash Telegram and find our channel there. So I'm, I'm looking at this as we're speaking here, as we're doing it, and I see I see an attachment paper clip, okay, where you can where you can put photos. We'll figure that out later, not on the show. Yeah, but I want it before we finish the show. I have to know whether I'm be able oh, to do just this do live. It, do it on Instagram, then you can do it live on Telegram. I've I've uh, found the thing mm. to do so. But uh, yeah, if you it, it do doesn't it. seem like it's easy. I don't know, but anyway, it's easy. Uh, Once you find it, all Sorry. right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So there it is. It's at the link. Did you, Zach? Did you drop the link in the show notes? Yep, it's in the show notes. Yep. It's in the show notes. If you haven't done it yet, open up the show notes and uh, read the article. And just just take five minutes to read the article. And if you read the article and you're, you're thinking, no, I'm not going to do that. That is terrible advice, and I'm not going to listen to you. Well, then I don't care. Then don't. I don't. But uh, for those of you that are intellectually honest, you need to understand that we. I need you guys in the audience to have strong brains and strong bodies strong, strong brains, brains and, and strong, strong bodies. bodies all right all right do you want to do it on instagram or telegram so people know where to go let's do it on instagram hi oh, geez all right we're gonna do it on instagram maybe that'll that'll bump our numbers up maybe it won't i don't know all right so uh the student of the gun guardian challenge officially starts. So if you're listening to this early, if you got a preview, uh, if you're listening to the trailer, you got two days to get your crap in order. But as of Wednesday, no more high fructose corn syrup. And it's in everything. You know, it is don't lie. Don't look at me and pretend like you don't know. Yes, you know, uh, no soy, no seed oil. All right, and then you need to increase everything else. You need to increase your A, B, C, D, E, K. Uh, A, B, C, D, E, K, G, M, O, U, S, Omega, 3. There you go. Uh, what? There you go. Read it. Learn it. Love it. And we're going to do this together. We're going to do this together so that, you know, while the zombies are all, like, eating garbage and, and doing their thing, that's fine. Let the zombies eat the garbage. Let them do that. We're going to have strong minds. We're going to have strong bodies. All right, moving on.
Ah, do, 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 do. Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week brought to you by our good buddies at Duracoat Firearm Finishes. There you go. All right. Last week, we talked a little bit about uh, the uh, traditional Rhodesian, the Bush War. How about the Bush War traditional? Now, this is kind of a follow up. People said, well, yeah, you know, but the original, if you go back and you look at photographs from the Bush War, if you go back and look at photographs from the, the Rhodesian Bush War, uh, you say, well, either the, the in the old, old photos uh, from like the very beginning when they were wearing a lot of the ones when they were wear, just just wearing shorts and tennis shoes. Like, Nobody ever wore shorts and tennis shoes to fight a war. Au contraire, mon frere. It was hot. They were wearing T-shirts, shorts, running shoes, and they were carrying R1s and chest rigs, which is some of the most badass stuff you've ever seen in your life. But uh, if you go back and you look at those old photos and you say, well, I want to be, you know, I, I want to be a, uh, oh, I want to do something authentic, something that looks authentic and a really nice, well-made, uh, you know, pattern uh, is not going to, it's not going to cut it because they didn't have really nice looking guns. It didn't look like you sat down as a professional with a template and did one layer and then you remove the template and you put another one on and did another one. What does it look like? Well, it looks like a kid, like an 18-year-old kid sat on an ammo crate in the motor pool with a paintbrush and put yellow baby poop and, and uh, jungle green on his gun. That's what it looks like. Well, there's a reason it looks like that. Because that's what they did. Because the Rhodesian Light Infantry guys, at some point in time, the sergeant major said, hey, we're camouflaging the kids up. We're sending them out in the bush all green and brown and, and loam and tan and stuff. But their rifles, they have these giant black rifles that kind of stand out. So the sergeant major, he said, uh, you guys need to paint your guns. Well, they didn't have Duracoat back then. They didn't have Krylon back then. They couldn't run out to Walmart or Target or, or uh, Lowe's or Best Buy and just, you know, get some rattle cans. What they had was, where was the paint? Where's the paint? Do the infantry guys, are they issued paint? No, I was in the infantry. We didn't have, they didn't issue us paint. Where's all the paint? It's in the motor pool. So the guys that are painting the, the trucks and the, and the, you know, the armored vehicles and all that, that that's where it's at. It's in the motor pool. So you, you get, you, you get, you know, first platoon and you send first platoon over to the motor pool and the motor pool sergeant standing there with a, with a camel non-filter hanging out of his mouth. And he, he tells them, all right, here's your paint. Here's your brushes. Go do your rifles. And that's what they did. They, they sat down and they, they got a, hey, had a transistor radio over in the corner. It was hanging on a hook on a post. They turned it to the local radio station and they were listening to the Rolling Stones paint it black and, and the doors and so on and so forth. Can I tell you something cool, Jared? No. All right. Well, I'm going to tell them something cool. You can just shut up. <laughs> uh, when, when I did my R1, when I did the, the, the DS Arms SA-58, I took my Bluetooth speaker and my phone and I put it on the 1970s rock radio station. Oh, yeah. I programmed it to that so that I could listen to the doors and the stones and so funny. forth while I was, I was trying to channel my inner Rhodesian light infantry, trying to imagine what it would have been like. The only thing I didn't have was a camel non-filter, uh, a non-filtered camel to, to sit there and and, uh, you know, they sat there on their, if you want to think, I mean, I was in the infantry. A lot of you guys were in the infantry and you know what they did. They sat there on their, and they, and they, they bull crapped and, 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 and told various, you know, tall tales and talked about chicks that they wanted to do and, you know, and all that stuff. And they painted up their rifles. Now, real, real, how, real quick, little aside, just, yeah. this is funny. 
So, but what what you're saying about like the camel noun filter? Yeah, that, that reminded me of a, a was it like Grumpy Old Men or something? But it was in the movie from the '80s where I remember the dude was talking to his dad, who was like an 85 year old man. He was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." The doctor it was, it said was you're Burgess be, Meredith. Yeah, the doctor said you're supposed to be smoking smoking filtered cigarettes. And he's like, "Ah, whatever." So back in the '80s, it wasn't "Don't smoke." It was "Smoke the filtered ones. Those are better for you." <laughs> that was actually in the '90s, but uh, anyway, whatever. yeah. That, you're supposed to era. switch to filters. Ah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is like when someone's 87 years old, you're it's like, dude, I'm 87. Yeah, it, it, it just as hey, is, there's a rabbit hole I'm going to jump down in. Uh, when uh, Jerry Seinfeld interviewed Jerry Lewis for his comedians and cars getting coffee, Jerry Lewis was in his 90s at the time, I believe. Right. And uh, they went to breakfast Jerry Lewis and Jerry Seinfeld went to breakfast, and Jerry's. Jerry Lewis ordered, um, he ordered bacon. I think he was like eighty nine or ninety. He ordered eggs and bacon and toast. Yeah, Lewis Terry Lewis died at age ninety one. And uh, matter of fact, the 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 Jerry Seinfeld interview was the last interview. No way of of Jerry Lewis in his life. He he, he died one? like six months later. Yeah. But Jerry, but Seinfeld says to him, he's he making this face, and he's like, I can't believe you're eating that, and, he, and he's he's eating the bacon, and he's like, what? He's like, oh, do you? He's like, you know, worried about your health or something like. I'm like, I'm ninety years old. I'm ninety, and I'm eating a big plate of what? What am I save? What am I saving up for? Yeah, you know, when you're 120, you're gonna regret eating all that bacon. It's like if somebody's 87 and they're smoking non-filtered camels, you're like, you better not do that. It's like, I'm 87. Okay. I'm what am I, yeah. When you're 130, you're going to wish you hadn't smoked those non-filtered camels. But anyway, <laughs> you got us down the rabbit hole back. Whoop. We're back at the Duracoat finish farm. So you say, I want to do my gun in a traditional Bush War Rhodesian style, but because I got the clothes now and I do have the clothes and we're going to follow up. We're going to do a special report about Rhodesian light infantry camo clothing that, and I'm just waiting for the maker right now. Right now, the guys who make the clothes are kind of in an upheaval. They're setting up a brand new shop in Texas and things are a little crazy for them. But once they settle, I'm going to get them on here and uh, he's a veteran too. He's, and we're going to talk about that. That's the Bush war. Yeah, no, not the, oh. not of the Bush War. He's a, he's a military veteran. Okay. Mm. So, any hooser, the two colors that you want to get from Duracoat, because uh, they don't have one that's called Baby Poop Yellow. Uh, they have one that's called Russian Special Forces Yellow. Because I said Spetsnaz previously during the show. I said Spetsnaz, and it's not called Spetsnaz. It's called Russian Special Forces Yellow. Because apparently... People didn't know what a Spesnaz was, and they're like they were confused. So, Russian Special Forces Yellow is the closest to a baby poop yellow Duracoat that they have, and I think they should just change it to baby poop yellow. <laughs> Would you that guys buy that? Sound as badass. <laughs> yes. Russian <laughs> Special Forces, man, that makes my gun more accurate. Uh, that's, that's Baby funny. poop is just like a big splatter, so uh, it makes it, make it less accurate. Uh, and the people, the, I see, our friends at Duraco, they listen. Oh, yeah. They actually listen. Hey guys, everybody out on the floor at at uh, up in uh, up in in Wisconsin, uh, and they're like, "No, stop, Paul, stop, stop!" They're all screaming, "Stop! Don't tell people that they're gonna, they're gonna want." <laughs> we have enough skews. We don't need you to tell people that. Yeah. But it's Russian special forces yellow. It is the baby poop yellow, and then there's a lot of greens. If you go to Duracoat and you're like, oh, and you look up green, you're like, holy crap balls. There's 28 different shades of green. The green you want to pick is the, uh, it's the vortex green. Vortex. There is a vortex green. Now, vortex green. To be fair, 
they do say dark coat does say that they can come up with any color that is true so if amy is listening and she's cringing right now she's like just stop all now you said if it's not in the catalog and we want it that we need to come to you <laughs> and you <laughs> uh, oh that would be cool would that be cool if they if they just if they made it easier for the consumer by packaging the special forces yellow and the vortex in a in a two pack and calling it the the rli the rhodesian light infantry or call it the bush war they could call it the bush war traditional and and if they this is see see how things happen i thought they had oh they have a really super nice rhodesian uh pattern but here's the deal it's too nice oh it's too nice because uh, if you look up the pictures of Rhodesian light infantry soldiers carrying their R ones, I see what you're saying. It doesn't look like it was in the factory niceness. It looks like like you know Johnny was sitting on an ammo crate in the motor pool painting his rifle with baby poop and jungle green. So if I had a company called Duracoat Fire and Finishes, what I would do is I would package up. I would do a special run. And I would call it yellow, baby poop yellow and jungle green. I would put them together. I would call that the, the traditional, the Bush war traditional kit. And I would sell it to the consumer as a two can kit. That's what I would do if I had a company called Duracoat. Now I don't have a company called Duracoat, so it's not up to me. So that, but that's, uh, if you're into that, then rock on. And like I said, I've got the, uh, I finally, after going through all of the COVID restrictions and the delays in shipping and the containers sitting off the coast for months on end, I finally got my Rhodesian uh, light infantry official brushstroke camouflage uniform, tops, bottom, hat, all that good stuff. So, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna bring uh, we're gonna yes yeah, look how nice that is way too nice that is so nice it's 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 too nice that's the thing is it's too nice now would I be mad if I had a gun like that no I wouldn't be mad but it wouldn't look like like the nineteen year old yeah. privates in the RLI were yomping through the bush with so all right let's continue so duracoat finish firearms if you want to duracoat like a champ you can do it follow the link in the show notes go to duracoat university get signed up and uh you can be a pro just like them where do they get the show notes though mm, how they, do they see those they get the show notes by opening up when you were listening on yeah. if you're listening on iHeartRadio or spotify or itunes or anything you open up the show notes and there are links, and you click those links, and it takes you places. You mean if I'm listening right now, I could just look at my screen, and the notes will be there? Yeah. Holy cow. You could do that. It's magic. Well, but what if they're not? Can I get them on studentofthegun.com? You could probably get them on studentofthegun.com. Oh, wow. Yeah, you probably, you could probably search the episode number or something like that. Yeah, like episode 1150. Oh, okay. We're at 1150. That's awesome of us. Part too. one. Part one. All right, SDS Imports. If you want uh, affordable quality that's affordable, uh, you go to sdsimports.com, shotguns, handguns, accessories, striker-fired guns, 1911s, semi-automatic 12-gauge shotguns, uh, the, the, the uh, what is it, VK-12? 12, is it VK-12? Uh, the V-12? The, 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 the one that I used, the Takara one that I used, is it the... KV twelve twelve VK VK twelve I can't remember uh, I'm having a, I'm having a main, a brain block right now I can't remember which one we have the but uh, it's not the TB and not the TBP twelve uh, it's not the TAR no it's not the oh. TAR it's one that looks like an AK it's a Kalashnikov yeah. it's the Kalash the Kalash but any user uh, go to our uh, check out our buddies at SDS Imports uh, you can't buy guns from them but you can buy guns from distributors and dealers that sell their guns. There you go. Oh, man. Juxi.com. Um, I'm going to go check our, our Juxi channel right now. J-U-X-X-I.com. 
It is the alternative to YouTube and Google because they are not reliant upon YouTube and Google to support their videos. That means so. It, that means when uh, YouTube and Google decide you guys aren't allowed to talk about guns anymore, you can't feature guns, you can't blah, 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 uh, and they shut us down, then there will be a place to go. We have a student of the gun channel there, and we only went up five subscribers from last week to today. What? That's pathetic. For those of you that are content creators. That's pathetic. Juxi is not an instead of. It is an, an in addition to. Mm -hmm. And uh, Juxi's made it really easy to import everything that you already have on YouTube. So at least you know you have a safe video library. That's right. You can store it and not have to worry that one day YouTube will wake up and say, you know what? We don't like you anymore. All your stuff is gone. And if you're in a position, if you're a content creator right now and everything you have is stored on YouTube, uh, it's the VP12, AK. That's what I was looking for. I was looking for Victor Papa. Victor Papa 12, yeah, AK. Said. VP 12. You said VP? I said VK. I was wrong. Maybe I didn't say VP. But uh, any user. And you know how I know that because I reviewed the VP 12, AK 12 gauge semi automatic shotgun on juicy.com. J U X X I on the Student of the Gun channel. So you're telling me that I can go to the Student of the Gun channel. It's juicy.com slash channel slash Student of the Gun. Mm -hmm. Click on that videos tab and it'll be in here somewhere. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. that's nice. I guess you I'll could... pull a link and put it in the show notes there. There you go. So it's easy for you guys that there are you go. watching or listening. There you go. That's cool. I'm going to, just for fun, I'm going to go to high dash point firearms and Not uh, the VZ58. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Stop. <sighs> Don't confuse people. And they are still prepping to go to GunCon. Yes. Dave. Dave. Dave's not here, man. Dave's not here, man. Uh, Dave's not here, man. Maybe it's Kara. No, she's like, hey, don't throw me. And she's like, yeah, hey, she's hey, like, hey, no, hey. Dave. Don't you, don't slander my name. <laughs> we know it's not Charlie. We definitely know it's not Charlie. Uh, so it's probably Dave, but maybe it's not Dave. Maybe Dave's in charge, though. Any hooser, any hooser. All right, it's time for me to be quiet. And for you, if you're a new listener, an old listener, if you haven't been here in a while, whatever, just, just listen. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So last week, we brought up a concept project that we're working on. It is called the Minimum Effective Dose. A Minimum Effective Dose. Now, we completely and totally stole this from our uh, workout training, from our strength training, because that's what Barbell Logic is all about. It is about giving you the minimum effective dose dose who's that dude that did the i think this originally came from uh he wrote a couple different books it was the four hour work week which was really popular and then the four hour body tim ferris i think the minimum effective dose concept mm. originally came from him but he might have got it from like plato or something yeah i mean this it's not like that's something new but what what we want what we're focusing on is an ar a black rifle that has everything you need, just as Jeff Cooper said about his gun sight 1911, everything you need and nothing that you don't, right? Minimum effective dose. So part of that minimum effective dose uh, is we ordered and we have received, and it is now in our hot little hands, Yes, a KE Arms completed lower. Like Borat says, I am excited. I am excited. Yes, I am excited. So... The KE Arms, if you don't know, is basically, it is the continuation of a concept that was done by Cav Arms many, many years ago, back in the mid-2000s. The early to mid-2000s, those of you who are firearms historians or uh, who were paying attention back then know that there was a company called Cav Arms, uh, and they made a unibody lower receiver, 
where they combined the res- the lower receiver part, the pistol grip part, and the stock part all into one unit. And you could just drop an AR, an upper receiver, onto it, and bing, bang, boom, yes, ready to go. Let's go ahead and play the intro music for the Brownhouse Bullet Points. Oh, we didn't do that. Yeah, let's yeah. go ahead and do that. All right, so are we back? Zach, yeah. Zach, am I good? Yep, we are good to go now. Back. All right, oh, good. I had to, had a little had a moment there. So, any hooser, um, I'm, I was so daggum excited to talk about the KE Arms Complete Lower Receiver yes. that uh, um, I forgot the intro music. But what we did is uh, we we ordered we went to Brownells. Essentially, it has they've done their best to resurrect the original cab arms concept i was gonna say that came out a while ago and i guess it it well at least in, in my little world that i'm in it didn't really take off which are you talking about the cab arms or the ke arms? Oh, i'm sorry the ke okay uh yeah so what what brownells did is they they came up with a uh a wwsd what would stoner do kind of a thing and uh, they partnered with ke arms llc to make and distribute uh, these lower receivers now you can get them as stripped lowers means no triggers no you know parts hammers components uh any of that stuff you can get it completely stripped and install all your own stuff in it or you can just get it from them ready to go with a you know a safety and and hammer and all that stuff uh i went ahead and ordered the one that's that's complete and you say wow that's kind of cheating man it's like actually yeah we ordered the one that has everything it has the hammer the trigger the it has the buffer uh spring has the buffer and the buffer spring in it uh it's ready to go and the reason i did that is because i don't really need practice assembling a lower receiver i know how to do it i I need lots of practice i've done it we're gonna disassemble it and then reassemble it and (laughs) disassemble it and reassemble it no so no. that i can get a lot of practice no we're not gonna do that no, we're not gonna do that so we have it in our hot little hands right now it's a pretty slick item uh it, it's you know relatively inexpensive when you're talking about having you know you say oh i look for i look for a strip lower and the strip lower is only 69 dollars yeah but it doesn't have you have to put everything you in. you have to put everything in it and you don't have a stock yet and you don't have a buffer and a buffer tube and i think the strip comes buffer with spring stock. and all that so no just i'm talking about a regular strip oh lower. okay yeah a regular strip lower uh a regular strip lower uh is now i'm not sure how much the I'm, I'm looking i think it was like 80 bucks maybe for a stripped ke arms lower with nothing in it it is 81.99 okay so if you buy a stripped ke arms lower uh that comes with the pistol grip the stock and obviously the lower receiver now because of the world in which we live right now and we're going to talk about that in a second but because of the world in which we live uh we still have to uh beg for permission from our slave masters to own firearms so it is a lower it has a it has a metal plate with a serial number inscribed in it it's, it's pretty nice so you have to transfer it just it, like you transfer a gun yeah but any hooser, uh, this is a follow up. We're going to be doing, like I said, the the ARMED, the AR Minimum Effective Dose Project, and uh, we have the first component in our hands right now, and it's the KE Arms lower. And if you guys are fans of Brownells, if you're not fans of Brownells, well, you need to fix yourself and and get to be fans of Brownells. Come on, what are you doing, man? Uh, but uh, check them out. Check them out. You can go to their website right now and check out the KE. That's Kilo Echo Dash One Fiber. KE Arms Lower. KE 15. All right. All right. Now it's time for me to be quiet and let Zach talk for a little bit. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You should do that. And I'm going to give Zach a little... uh... I'm going to give him a a, 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 uh, a waiver. 
Last week when we were talking, Zach said that the new Marshall application of the shotgun book would be available for sale. Well, those fornicators at the shipping, those fornicators in shipping delayed our shipping. Yeah, and when I had said that, there was like 15 boxes waiting for me at the office. None of them were the books. No. I figured at least one of those boxes was the books. No, the fornicators in shipping. Uh, it was be here. Like when this it's supposed to be here today. Yeah, sweet. Awesome. Yeah, uh, the fornicators and shipping. It was supposed to be there last week, and then we got a notification. Uh, your package has been de- like delayed, man. In, but don't worry, man. We'll we'll get it to you sometime soon. So uh, the good it, news is we've it, got it. The good news is if you're listening to this today, Zach's going to go ahead and create a product, and you'll be able to order a pimp hand approved version, a pimp hand approved copy of the Marshall application of the shotgun, and you can pair that with the pimp hand approved copy of the Marshall application of the pistol. How's that? And see how that worked? There you go. All right, it is time for us to talk about. Crossbreed holsters and the student of the gun homeroom. We're time to be dangerous on demand, hippies. All right, it's the Crossbreed Holsters homeroom time to be dangerous on demand. Uh, and if you know anything about us and know anything about our Crossbreed Holsters discussion, uh, we think that you should actually carry your freaking gun. I know you're like, what? Carry your freaking gun? But I live in New York and I'm not allowed. I live in California and I'm not allowed. Well, it sucks to be you, I guess. But for those of us who live in free America, we carry our guns. And the best way to carry your gun is to actually get a high quality holster that you can put on your body and leave there all day long and not have to worry about it. Not have to worry about it, not have to continuously take it on, you know, take it on, take it off, moving around and all that stuff. No, just get up in the morning, put on your pants, put your holster on and leave it alone. Just leave it and it'll be good. If it's a crossbreed, if it's a crossbreed holster, just leave it. Man, move on with your life, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, and make sure that when you travel on over to the Crossbreed Holsters website, you use the promotional code Sierra Oscar Tango Golf. I know I just confused the normies. It's SOTG. Type in SOTG. All right. Uh, we got a story here. We got a story here from the Communist Broadcasting Service, also known as CBS News. Uh, but I thought, what the heck, let's let the communists tell us about what's going on right just directly south of the United States border. Now, you know, one thing, I'm going to preface this. I'm going to preface this. So every time there's a mass shooting in the United States of America, what do other countries do? Uh, I don't know. Oh, they report on it, and they use it as an excuse to disarm their people. They're like, up in America, they had a mass shooting perpetrated by a government bureau. And so we're going to make sure none of our people are allowed to have guns. Canada did it. Freaking Chile. Chile, man, down in uh, South America. Chile, the president of Chile is like, we cannot tolerate this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass a law. Well, the, the Congress or the, the, the Parliament will pass the law, but I told them to pass it, so they have to. And we're going to make sure nobody gets to have guns. See, if anything happens in the United States, other countries lose their crap, right? And they're like, no, our people must be disarmed. So this happened right, like, within a rock's throw of the border of the United States. And I'm wondering, where's our bro Sniffy Joe, the meat puppet on this? From from my understanding, this happened in multiple places in Mexico. Where is the cackling uh, camel toe uh, Harris? Where is she on this? Because, you know, if this were to happen in the United States, all the other countries would be like, that's terrible. And blah, 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 blah. remember when it, the, the moment that we allowed that meat puppet to be installed as president, he shut down the border security program. Did you know that they also approved, I think, four sections of the wall to be completed? Uh-huh. After, after the uh, the massive. It was just a quiet thing. Like, that sh- they, you know, uh, after 
their campaign during the campaign but they said no we will not let illegal. any more not one more inch of this wall will be built yeah um but anyway so this story is at least 11 killed businesses burned near mexico's border with u.s and violence blamed party partly on el chapo's sinaloa cartel hmm um, so I this is the Juarez story, and I also heard that TJ and then more of a central Mexico city, I can't remember the name of it, was uh, was also, this was like gang violence that was being perpetrated. A wave of violence in a Mexican city on the border of the United States left 11 people dead, including a radio presenter, and a businesses were torched, and businesses were torched, not a businesses. In the first incident in Juarez, two prison inmates were shot at dead, and 20 injured in a riot involving two rival gangs. Local media said that both groups were linked to the Sinaloa cartel, whose former leader, El Chapo, is currently serving a life sentence in the United States. <laughs> I also heard that it was due to, maybe it was the arrest. I was going to say, I thought it was due to the death of one of the higher cartel leaders. Hmm. Later on, innocent civilians were attacked as kind of a retaliation by one of the gangs, President Obrador said. Obrador. Two women were killed and another person was hurt in an attack on a food store, which was set on fire along with two other premises in Juarez, which sits just across the border from El Paso, Texas. Mm. Just like right across the border. So, it's you know what like, they need. Like TJ is, I think, 20 miles from California. Who is? T Tijuana. I think it's like 20 miles from oh. the, our border. But this is Cuidad Juarez. Yeah, this is Juarez. But um, it also happened in... in uh, it happened in Tijuana, Tijuana too? Yeah. So, you know what Unless they need? the reports that I saw were incorrect. In Mexico? More gun control. They need more gun control. They need more gun control because we can't just allow these cartels to run around with horrible assault weapons. Oh, crap. That's right. The Mexican drug cartels got their assault weapons from whom? They got them from the AFT. No. Oh, in case you guys forgot... I know it's been a long time. It was all the way back when Comrade Barry Sotero was the uh, faux president of the United States. Yeah, you guys remember when Comrade Barry Sotero uh, was the faux president of the United States? And, and uh, his buddy, Eric Holder, they came up with a program. They're like, we're going to bust the cartels wide open. We're going to bring them down. How, how are you going to do that? We're going to we're going to sell them guns. Hang on, hang on. So they had a they had a, a tabletop meeting, they had a, a pitch meeting. That's what I want the pitch meeting guy yeah, to do. That's funny. He's like, "So, what do you, what's your plan? We're going to bring down the cartels." Okay, that's a that, that's a uh, that would be a noble uh, undertaking. Uh how are you going to plan it on taking down the cartels? We're going to sell them guns. Yeah, but it's uh, it's actually illegal for uh, cartel members to purchase guns in the United States. And like, well, it's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have we're gonna work with gun dealers, and when they when they run the background check on these cartel members, we're gonna say approved. Go ahead and sell it to them. Yeah, but wouldn't that uh, wouldn't that literally funnel thousands of guns across the border into the into Mexico into the hands of the cartels? Yeah, yeah, but but here's the good news. What's well, what is the good news? Oh, well, we're gonna get the Mexican authorities after we do this, after we've done it, and and it's a fait accompli. Then we're gonna go to the Mexican authorities and tell them to arrest all those people. Yeah, but if the Mexican authorities could arrest the uh, gun cartel people or the the drug cartel people wouldn't they already be arresting them oh no 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 but they'll have our guns and that'll make it worse i don't really understand how this is going to work <laughs> that's the pitch meeting so the pitch meeting was we're going to bring down the cartels and the other person said how are we going to do that and they said we're going to sell them guns 
and they're going to take him across the border into Mexico. So what you guys are not supposed to be remembering right now, all you Americans, it's like it's like the government tries to do that that um, men in black flashy thing so that you don't remember. They're like, yeah, this cartel violence is terrible. It's horrible. Like, who armed him? What do you mean? Um, remember when Eric Holder, uh, Comrade Barry Sotero, Obama, uh, when they funneled thousands of guns directly into the hands of cartel members? Remember when they did that? Oh, but they used it to bring the cartels down. Did they bring the cartel down? Are, have the cartels been brought down? Jared, how many people were arrested and convicted of felonies thanks to Operation Wide Receiver and Fast and Furious? What happened to the cover? Did a dog eat it? What happened? Yeah, this was from my, my dog, Cinder. Are you long kidding? A long time ago, yeah. From Biloxi? Yeah. Aww. Wow. I still, uh, have, I still have that old camo jacket that she chewed weird. up the sleeve on. So, so this book is called, wait, what? You have what? Camo jacket. That old camo she jacket chewed. she chewed the sleeve on. Oh, yeah. Remember that one? Weird. Yeah. Uh, anyway, guns Across the Border. Guns Across the Border by Mike Deddy. Mike Deddy's a friend of ours. If you don't have this book, pick it up, read it. There's a lot of information about Operation Wide Receiver, which was actually the precursor to, um, I just, it just left my brain. Operation Wide Receiver in to Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. Mm -hmm. So op, it's the, the title of the book is called Oper Operation Wide Receiver. And the subtitle is An Informant Struggle to Expose the Corruption and Deceit that Led to Operation Fast and Furious. Uh, it is available right, right now as an Amazon book. You should buy it. So never forget the AFT. So this, this, is, a, the, this is prior to. Yeah. This is... Oh. Never forget that the same AFT that wants to disarm you, the United States, the American citizen, is the exact same AFT that funneled thousands of guns directly, purposefully, knowingly into the hands of the drug cartels. And so what do we see today? CBS News. Uh, massive violence on the border as drug cartels run rampant, killing people. Da, 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 da. And uh, is anybody going to say, hey, when are we going to put those guys that, that were involved in this in jail? When are the, the Department of Justice people who uh, orchestrated this, when are those guys going to go to jail? Oh, never. We need those people to disarm the Americans. We, we need those AFT guys to disarm the American citizens. Oh, got it. See, I forgot. I forgot that we needed the AFT guys to. So the same AFT that armed the cartels deliberately, purposefully, knowingly. Oh, and the answer to the question is how many cartel members were convicted of felonies and jailed thanks to wide receiver and fast and furious. That number would be zero. They got one misdemeanor conviction. Woo! Well, I bet that guy learned his lesson. Yeah, I bet that guy learned his lesson. Uh, and by the way, Mike Deddy, you're a freaking gangster. Mike, Mike Deddy is the OG. Yeah, no kidding. He's the original. Mike Daddy's the OG. If you All want right. to know why he's the OG, you should read this. You book. should read the book. Read There's the freaking book. I know Mike. And we know why he's the OG, but know why he's you OG, don't know why he's I the OG. I know him, and as I was reading this book, I was like, is Mike going to live through this? I hope, I hope Mike doesn't get killed. I hope killed. Mike lives through this. It's like, yeah, but he wrote the book. So I think oh, yeah, that's right. right. All right, uh, are you ready for some serious, hardcore Orwellian 1984 action? You are? Oh, cool. All right, so uh, the, the, uh, the U.S. government, they just passed the Inflation Control Act. Now you say to yourself, so the government has the ability to bring down inflation. If the Jared, if the government has the ability to br by passing a law and spending money, because you guys understand that's what bills are. 
a bill in, in is not and you're like what's a law no it's a giant price tag a bill is a giant is basically the authority it's congress granting themselves authority to spend more of your money no bill that is ever passed in the house of representatives the senate signed by the president is free it always has a price tag and this one has a multi-billion dollar price tag so the the anti the inflation control act 79.6 billion dollars is i know how we can bring down inflation how's that spend 79 billion dollars well to be fair it's only 7.96 billion per year oh okay oh it's only 7.9 thousand yeah. million dollars yeah because the 79.6 billion is over a 10-year period so we're spending what are they doing money, what are they spending that money might on? actually be normal priced money by the time we get there to pay for it did you know but that? i thought that we we're in the red actually i thought we we're in a massive deficit right no. now no didn't you know that i can't even think of something stupid to say we're in a massive deficit we have no money so the answer yeah this is not insane. about having money it's about having resources to obtain the money you don't have to have do you money. mean like like going to the federal reserve continue. and just saying hey will you print some money for us you can just continue to to put yourself in debt further and further and further and further until eventually you go bankrupt just because you're but does the government debt, ever go bankrupt doesn't mean that you can't acquire more money mm, but does the government ever go bankrupt or do know, they just print more money and, and give us the bill for it I can i do that with my bank account once it once it reaches zero can i just keep writing checks and just tell the bank well i know that it says zero today but in the future i'll have more money so i need you to just let me keep writing checks you can't on a zero account you know how you do that oh you get an override no yeah you get yeah. a overdraft line, protection you get a line of credit yeah you get they're like yeah we'll we'll get let you we'll just that's, uh that's what we're operating eventually on as a country it's like eventually a the bank says credit. no can i can i use my overdraft protection to buy a house no but you can get a mortgage which is also a line of credit if i have zero and really if i have zero dollars in my bank i can get a mortgage in the house i mean maybe depends on who you know right depends on who you know yeah okay um so this this is see this is the insane thing it's like if the government can pass a law to reduce inflation couldn't the government have just stopped it from happening i don't know that's something i've been thinking about because uh, or what, did it, they cause it it seems by printing like money it seems like that has no backing if you let me finish what i'm saying it seems like we have the the government has figured out how to parachute in softly from this this economic potential economic collapse that they caused it yeah it it, it seems like that we figured out how to parachute in softly but then i'm confused because if that is the case is it is it are we doing that are we parachuting in softly because an election is coming up or okay why are we why, we're just why kicking is the can down out? the road so for the next generation and, to have to deal with and in addition to that um how is that happening how did we figure that out so if you as a household if you as a household Let's say, have, have any of you ever gone to a debt consolidation counselor? Or have you ever gone to a financial counselor? A lot of you have. And, and so you're like, well, as a couple, as a married couple, we found ourselves in massive debt. We, we, couldn't, we couldn't make the bills with the money we we're bringing in. And we're like, well, you know, it, it doesn't matter what we do. We don't have enough hours in the day to work more hours and so you sit down with a debt consolidation guy didn't he tell you to spend more money yeah what is what is the financial advisor to do the financial advisor says oh you're in debt and you can't cover your costs you know what you need to do Buy more money. i want you to go out and spend more money 
That's what you need to do right now. You need to go out. You need to figure out ways to spend more money. You say, no, Paul, that would be retarded. That is not what happens, and that's not what you do. Oh, but if you're in the government, that's exactly what you do. If you're in the United States government, so rather than pumping the brakes and saying, you know what? We probably should stop just printing billions of worthless dollars. That could be a start. Let's stop doing that. Let's stop spending money we don't have. We could do that. No, your government, their solution to an economic crisis is to spend more money. And then... As an addition, as an additional insult to you, the person, the citizen who could never get away with this, you as a citizen could never get away with doing what the government is doing. But as a bonus, you're like, we just slapped you on your left cheek. Hold on. We're going to slap you on your right. So the government's like, you know what? The, the economy is in crisis we're having a you know this is not good we got to pump the brakes stop this inflation of course they sent joe out to say that last quarter we had zero inflation that's funny joe because everyone in america is spending more for everything they buy but i guess if you say uh, the, well the president said what the president said and if he said it then it's the truth the uh, Penn Wharton University of Pennsylvania published a, uh, what is this called? A budget model, I guess, is what this is. Uh-huh. It says, there's a summary, PWBM, mm-hmm. estimates that the Senate passed version of the Inflation Reduction Act would reduce non-interest cumulative deficits by $264 billion over the budget window. So it's costing 70, essentially $80 billion returns are supposed to be 264 billion S- seems good on the face of it mm-hmm. the impact of inflation is statistically indistinguishable from zero okay gdp so here- falls slightly within the first decade while increasing slightly by 2050 most but not all of the tax <sighs> increases fall on higher income households stop stop okay so rather than spend less money then the federal government says rather than saying you know what here's what we need to do we need to be fiscally responsible we need to not spend more money we need to spend less no 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 that's not it here's what we're going to do we're going to fix the inflation problem that we created in 2019 2017 18 19 the economy was roaring all right, oh, can we not remember what happened three years ago? Three years ago, companies were deliberately and purposely coming back to the United States from overseas. Not because someone put a gun to their head, but because it was a good thing to do. People were working. The economy was good. Gas was low. You could buy food. But didn't you just see that there we had the biggest jobs jump in the last three years? No, we didn't. It's a lie. So Uh the government went not quit trying to take me off track. And then so the government solution to fixing the economy is to hire an army of IRS agents to go steal more of your money. Oh, no, it's all you're going to steal money from the rich people. No, because this is what we know. This is the reality of the world. Wealthy people have financial attorneys and accountants people who have accumulated large amounts of wealth have attorneys and accountants and they pay them to keep the irs off their back the average person can't afford to put an a tax attorney on retainer oh you go to h&r block you can go to h&r go fornicate yourself it's you the person who actually is trying to get ahead in your life the person who's trying to buy a house the person who's trying to improve your lot in life by getting a better promotion or a better job maybe maybe you're an insane person and you've decided to start your own business 
That's who this army of IRS agents is going after. This army of IRS agents is not going to target the wealthiest of all Americans. And first of all, who in the hell gave them the authority to target them anyway? Why don't we target congressmen and senators? They seem to be making a lot of money. This is a massive insult. But we haven't even gotten to the best part yet. So the accountants... Now, I talked to Zach about this on the phone yesterday. One of the, one of the insane things of being my age and having a memory is when I was young, the government used to refer to the income tax as, quote, the voluntary income tax system. They actually did that. They actually said those words. We've gone from the voluntary income tax system to we're going to hire an army of tax auditors and if you don't you know years ago i was talking with uh um tom gresham and we were i think we were on his show and he said he said taxation at the point of a gun and people were like oh that's not true that's not true at all it's it's not it's it's paying your fair share you need to pay your fair share. And as long as we all pay our fair share, everything will be fine. My question to you is, is okay, let's go ahead and, and go to your utopia where everyone, quote, pays their fair share. First of all, what is that even? But let's just say that happens. So does that mean that the government will stop spending money it doesn't have? Does that mean the government will set an annual budget and when that money is spent, they'll stop spending money? And, you, and you're like, well, no, actually what the government does is they just, they create a budget, but it's more of a guideline than a rule. So if they need more money, then they just go to the Federal Reserve and they just make more money out of nowhere. Or they go to China and they borrow it. And like, so how is, how is me paying my fair share going to make sure that my government is fiscally responsible with the money that they steal from me and can, do we have any repercussions when they steal our money and use it for things like i don't know murdering babies i don't think murdering babies is a good thing matter of fact i disapprove of murdering babies i don't think that my tax money should be given to organizations like planned parenthood that murder babies yeah, but here's the deal. You don't get a say in how that's spent. They take it at the point of a gun. So this army, if you're not insulted as a citizen by this, I don't need, I don't know how to reach you. This army of IRS agents, well, they want them armed. And someone recently said to me, well, technically IRS agents are law enforcement as somebody that went through a six-month, 520-hour police academy who had to go to a state accreditation examination to be accredited by the state to become a law enforcement officer, the idea that someone would tell me that an IRS agent is, quote, law enforcement is supremely insulting. They're tax collectors. Their job is to figure out how to steal your money. And now they want you to be afraid to even open your mouth and question them because, well, it says uh, you must be willing to work 50 hours a week and to carry a firearm and to use deadly force if necessary. What happened to the voluntary income tax program? Well, it's voluntary unless you open your mouth uh, or unless you don't give us the money that we think. When we'll come to you with guns, and if you resist, we'll kill you. But what's worse is the memory hole. You see, the memory hole, you, Jared, what was Winston's job? What was Winston's job? He what did he do for Big Brother? He fixed it. That's right. He removed it. 
He took the the government decided he was in charge of making sure he was disinformation and misinformation did not happen. That's right. One well, he was one of many, but his job was to make sure that he altered and changed factual history on behalf of Big Brother. People don't need that information anymore. We're going to change it, and it'll be as if it never happened, as if that person never ever existed. Just read the first paragraph here, or read the title in the first paragraph. Oh. Let me get back to it. IRS deletes job posting seeking applicants willing to use deadly force. The IRS deleted a job posting Wednesday seeking a special agent willing to use deadly force for its law enforcement division criminal investigation. The deletion came amid renewed scrutiny of the IRS in response to the to a Democrat backed spending bill that would double the size of the agency. Double the size. Yep. So and you say, okay, let's let's just go ahead and move on from that. That's one weaponized. So we're gonna weaponize the IRS, but we can't weaponize the IRS if these damned peasants still have guns. Well, we're weaponizing the ATF. The ATF just recently gave themselves the authority to reclassify a rectangular shaped piece of aluminum as a firearm. You see, the rectangular shaped piece, of, it used to be, Jared, back in the crazy, insane old days that they said, well, first of all, in the United States of America, you never needed to put numbers on your guns to own one, right? And, but then they came around, they're like, no, you got to we got to track them, and that's going to stop crime. We've been tracking guns for 60, 70, 80 years, and it hasn't. doesn't seem like it's brought the crime rate down. They've, the guns have had serial numbers on them for what, since 34? And yet every year, there's so much crime and oh the crime oh the gun crime well you told us in 1934 if we let you mandate serial numbers on guns that it would bring down the crime rate so did you lie or were you incompetent and wrong which is it did they lie to us then or were they just incompetent and wrong no we just need more laws so the atf is a bureaucracy not a law enforcement agency okay they're a bureaucracy they're a tax collection agency but they've given themselves the authority to create law and you said hang on a second paul no bureaucracy in the united states has the authority to create law that falls on the congress and the senate yeah yeah i know you think that the legislative branch is the only branch of government that can quote create law yeah but when you're the federal government what you do is you just create a bureaucracy and you give them the authority to just do whatever they want they can make rules you say yeah but a rule is not a law paul an executive an order is not a law a memorandum is not a law a law is a law but a rule is not a law well what we're going to do is we're going to enforce it like a law and uh if you if you open your mouth and talk back to us, well, then we'll sell people to sh we'll send people to kill your dog, arrest you, and throw you in jail. So the AFT uh, has decided it's going to redefine, and here we are again, allowing the government to change the definition of words. Does anybody else have a problem with the government just changing the definition of words? A vaccine is a medicine that you're given to prevent you from getting a disease well that was the old definition the new the definition of vaccines actually it's a shot we give you so that you'll still get sick but it it won't be as bad that's a vaccine yeah but for the entire history of man the vaccine was something we give you so you don't get that disease yeah well we had to we changed the definition of the word so now the definition of frame or receiver on a firearm is well apparently anything if it's a oddly shaped piece of aluminum and you say well if i handed you an 80 percent lower and i said here make this a gun make this shoot 
This is this is a gun. Make it go bang. You're like, well, I can't. Well, what do you mean you can't? Well, you can't make it shoot or go bang until you put it in a machine and you, and you cut it and drill holes in it and then you put a trigger and stuff in it. Then it'll be a gun. Yeah, but you just said that that weird shaped piece of aluminum is a is a firearm. Well, yeah, because we don't want peasants to be able to have them. Where in the F does it say that a peasant can't make their own firearm for their own use? Now, you decided back in 34 and 68 that we couldn't make them on our own and sell them to each other. But where does it say what law says that you can't make one for your own use, for your own personal use? <sighs> Well, it doesn't say that, but blah, 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 blah. now you guys remember the the famous but incompetent the FIB. Yeah, you guys remember uh, sixteen candles, right? When Long Duck Dong, I call police. I call FIB. He called police. He called FIB. So you remember when the FIB decided to investigate angry parents under the domestic terrorist statute? Remember when they said that they weren't going to do it? Remember when the head of the FBI went before Congress and said, that's ridiculous. That is, that is ludicrous. Not the rapper. That's ridiculous and ludicrous. And we would never investigate parents who are angry at their school boards for brainwashing their children and abusing their children. We would never investigate them as terrorists. Well, and then then somebody did some investigate. They they filed a Freedom of Information Act, and they did some investigation. And guess what they found out? Well, they found out that the FBI did, in fact, investigate angry parents as, quote, domestic terrorists. Oh. You mean after the head of the FBI went before Congress and said that that was crazy, that was crazy talk, and there's no possible way that the FIB was going to investigate angry parents as domestic terrorists? And then they went ahead and did it. And we said, wow, maybe the FIB's out of control. Maybe, you think? Remember when the FIB burned the uh, compound in Waco to the ground and killed? See, the FIB still holds the record for most kids killed in a day. Not supposed to know that. Not supposed to talk about that. Makes you That just made me a violent militia extremist for bringing up factual history. It's not like the FIB would send out a sniper and kill an unarmed woman who was standing in the doorway of her house holding her infant baby. It's not like they would do that. Well, yeah, but if they did that, that guy would be in trouble. If that sni- if a sniper killed an innocent unarmed woman with a 308 bullet through the head, that guy would be in prison for his whole life. Actually, what we did for that guy is we sent him to where, Jared? Where did they send Lon Horiyuchi? To somewhere else. No, I mean, there's, he, they sent him to somewhere else. They sent him to Quantico, and they made him a traitor. And he got a gold watch. And right now, today, as we're speaking, he's getting a pension. He's got a big, fat government pension. He didn't spend one day in jail. Now, you and I, they'd have buried us under the jail. So the FIB now has decided to classify, and it, these were leaked documents, this is a story from AmmoLand.com, uh, anybody who essentially, they sent out, if you find out these people are, quote, 2A supporters, if they, these are the symbols that make you, so if they find out, if the FIB finds out that you have the following symbology whether they're shoulder patches or stickers on your car or anything, that is an indication to them, to their counter-terrorist unit, that you are a militia violent extremist. The, the Spartan Valhalla helmet. Yes, the Spartan Valhalla helmet. The Mulan, using the term Mulan Lave, the Greek, the Greek come and take it. You know, your tattoo makes you a yep, militia violent apparently. extremist. 
if you openly support and discuss 2A and well, if you use the term well-regulated militia, if you own or display a Gadsden flag, you're like, wasn't that used during the American Revolution? Yep. Or a Betsy, Betsy If you Ross use flag. a Betsy Ross flag, you're like, wasn't that the original first flag, 13 stars of the United States of America, the first American flag? Yes. If you reference or display the Liberty Tree, if you reference or display a Revolutionary War soldier imagery, all of these things, according to the FIB, classify you as a violent militia extremist. Oh, don't forget the predator or the uh, Punisher. If you use the Punisher, yeah, the Punisher skull or any variation of the Punisher skull that classifies you as a violent militia extremist. But the funny thing is here in under symbols of militia networks, some MVEs may self identify with American contingency is one of them. And in the description, it says mainstream militia nationwide, mostly online activity, low history of violence. Yeah. So in case you guys haven't figured it out yet, the federal bureaucracy in Washington, D.C., the FIB and the ATF, the AFT, according to Sniffy Joe, it's the AFT, and I don't want to call him wrong because the president said it, and what the president said stands. So what we're going to do is we're going to weaponize the FIB and the AFT to disarm you, and then after you're disarmed, we're going to weaponize the IRS to take your money. And we're telling them, they're recruiting people. You say, you're like, well, that's just standard law enforcement practice, Paul. First of all, calling the IRS law enforcement is an insult to every person who's ever actually put on a uniform to defend their community. And that's an, it's a slap in the face. And they're recruiting people. And then what's worse, Jared, you see, well, if that's fine, if it's perfectly fine, to say, well, these people are going to be law enforcement, and that's part of law enforcement recruiting is deadly force and carrying a gun. Well, if they're so proud of it, why did the IRS go in after some media people posted that? Why did they go in and memory hole that? Why did they go and delete it? Why did they take it down? See, that makes it worse. That's like, oh, no, no, we never said that. Well, yes, you did. Nope. Memory hole. Winston threw that down the memory hole. You don't know that. That didn't. That never existed. We're going to change the definition of the word. We're going to allow the government to change the definition of words at will to meet with whatever they want to do. Kids, you, the end of the story is this. If you pay attention, if you read the news, if you see what's happening, you need to understand this. It is you, the American citizen, that is the enemy of the federal government. They view you as their enemy. They don't view criminals as their enemy. They don't view the cartel as their enemy. They don't view the Chicago gangbangers as their enemy. They don't, they don't view a million illegal invaders, most of which are cartel members many of which are cartel members they're not the enemy you're the enemy because you're the only one who has the power to stop them you see they're not worried about the gangbangers in chicago stopping them they're not worried about the illegal invaders stopping them their biggest fear is that you the american citizen will stop them that's why you are their enemy. That's why you have to be disarmed. That's why you have to be controlled. Zachary. Hello there. How are you today? Thursday, we have another episode of Student of the Gun University podcast. Yes. What will be the topic for Thursday's Student of the Gun University podcast? The topic for this Thursday, Student of the Gun University podcast is handgun sight confusion. 
where you talk about confusion about handgun sights. And I correct it. I bet you. I bet you if I was someone who looked like me, I would I would clear up the confusion about handgun sights. Don't you think so? <laughs> I think that's exactly what you would do. I think that's what I would do. All right. So make sure that you're tuning in to that on Thursday, that you're tuning in to Student of the Gun University podcast. And leave us a review, you freaks. There's only eight reviews on iTunes right now. There should be a hundred. All right. And tomorrow on the uh, super cool special bonus hour, if you're a grad program member, uh, you can join us and you should join us. Student of the Gun Guardian Challenge. We're going to break that down in detail. We're going to have a leadership lesson. And then we're going to talk about another reason to G-Y-K-O-P-S. Guy Cops. All that tomorrow. Jared, remind them how they can join us for the bonus hour. Everybody that's listening, especially you guys that are in the official Student of the Gun Discord server right now and you're not a grad program member, Go to getsotg.com, join the undergrad member program. You can try it out for 30 days for a dollar. It's a low barrier of entry for you guys. So go to getsotg.com, join the undergrad program, cash out that dollar. Just send it to us. It's fine. There you go. And remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.